for science! All right, guys, it's time for me to go ahead and do a Warcraft movie review. I'm going to talk a lot about the movie spoiler free, and then later on we'll get into a section where we talk about it with spoilers. Uh, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you can watch safely. For now, I will definitely give you a big warning once I move into the spoiler section. Uh, so for me to talk about this movie, first of all, you're going to have to understand... Uh, who I am and how I went into the movie because not everyone's going to go into this movie with the same set of expectations, the same history with the content. I am, you, if you don't know who I am, I'm Willie Dills. I am a co host on The Instance, which is an, a podcast about World of Warcraft. It is a podcast that has been going on for more than 10 years, I think. Uh, I've been on now for five plus years, and it is the number one World of Warcraft podcast going although now we're much more of a just kind of blizzard catch-all podcast but you know it's its roots are in just world of warcraft and i joined it about five years ago like i said uh me scott johnson and the terpster and now we have uh, patrick from france on the show as well um so i come to this not as just a warcraft fan but somebody who took my love of warcraft and made it somewhat of a profession right so you know, being a podcaster is what I do now for a living. So not only do I love the the Warcraft universe, but I love it so much that I decided to kind of make it my life uh, in, in a lot of different ways. Now, I don't play a lot of Warcraft anymore. Uh, I'm kind of back and forth at this point. I will always have my World of Warcraft account, and every single time a new expansion comes, I will play it, and I will probably play the crap out of it. And that's just, you know, how I play at this point. It's at any given moment, that game could suck me right back into it. Um, that's I, I just I have so much love for the game. All right, so coming into it as a fan, a huge fan of the Warcraft universe, is obviously I'm going to look at it with maybe rose-colored glasses. That's fine. I'm fully ready to admit that I went in ready to love this movie, uh, but I also have expectations maybe that some other people might not. So you know, I hoped for some things. And one of those things is I hoped that this movie felt like World of Warcraft, looked like World of Warcraft, sounded like World of Warcraft. I wanted to be sucked into Azeroth. I wanted to exist within Azeroth for two hours. I did not want to go in. You know, some of the some of the previews and the trailers had, uh, you know, electronic music pumping in the background to kind of build the excitement of this big fantasy world and that worried me i i'm not gonna lie i was definitely concerned that we were gonna get uh, a big over-the-top action movie with out that world of warcraft feel that i think is really important uh so i did have some expectations and some things that i was concerned about going in and obviously as i went into the movie too uh, because the movie had been out in europe for a while i did see rotten tomatoes with its 20% or whatever critic rating. Um, so I did, I did come into the movie thinking, oh, okay, damn it, I hope this is actually good. Um, now, that being said, before I go any further, and I'm going to give you like an actual number review and all that kind of stuff, but just so you don't have to wait, I love this movie. I love this movie so much. This movie was so good. After the movie was over, I wanted it to keep going. I wasn't done. I wanted to sit in my seat even longer, continue to watch the movie. I loved it. I had a blast watching this movie. It gave me everything I wanted as a Warcraft fan and some things I didn't know I wanted. And while I'm go not going to sit here and say that this is some perfect, this is not Citizen Kane, this is not Godfather 2, I didn't need it to be Godfather 2. I don't need it to be Citizen Kane. I don't understand why people need all fantasy movies to be the greatest thing that's ever happened. It, that's, that is stupid. That is just completely just unrealistic. I don't understand that. That being said, yes, there are some failings in this movie. Yes, there are things this movie didn't do perfectly. I, but, d dude, I don't care. I don't care. For two hours, I watched World of Warcraft, and I loved it. Um, not necessarily World of Warcraft. I watched the... The, you know, the stuff that leads up to World of Warcraft, which happens in the original Warcraft RTS movies, or RTS video games. Anyway, let's get into some of the things that the movie does right. But first, a sip of beer. I'm thirsty. Mmm. Alright. What does this movie do right? Well, this movie does amazing CGI work. Some of the best I think I've ever seen. The orcs look like orcs. 
in the game. Um, they're very big and bulky and scary and beastly, and they're just awesome. But not only are they that, they also have realistic facial expressions, and they look like creatures acting, not CGI monsters moving their mouth while somebody talks in the background. They are amazingly well done. The orcs are probably the best thing in this movie. Um, sorry, humans, you just can't measure up. I play an orc, so I've, you know, I'm all for it, man. For the horde, let's go. Um, battles. Battle scenes were... Okay, there. You, I could hear some, some of the complaints about some of the background stuff, but holy crap, you are just, like, trying to find things wrong. Battle scenes are historically some of the hardest things to do right you know, we remember movies like Braveheart because of the amazing battle scenes of these guys running directly towards each other and then the brutality of the battle coming across on the screen. We remember things like uh, Saving Private Ryan because it depicts war in this amazing way. This movie is about war and it gets across the brutality of war in a real way. And it also does a really good job of showing how the orcs are giant and massive and smash you with huge just like just hammers that are just crushing skulls but the humans can hold their own against them uh, and they actually do set that up pretty well the humans have some amazing warriors on their side as well and and of course you know some amazing uh, mages and and uh, so they're able to fight back but it really depicts those battle scenes and I think uh, just like it just gets them so right in so many ways it gets it right not only because you know I, when i watch it i don't want to see unrealistic combat because you know world of warcraft doesn't necessarily have realistic combat in it but now we're taking it to a movie screen i really do want to see realistic combat so i want to see people striking you know i want to see orcs making motions that make sense to me and I want to see humans finding ways to actually fight against them that make sense. And they actually really brought that, uh, that, that, that shown through. So the, the battle scenes and all of that is done amazingly well. And the combat seemed realistic. Now, some of the stuff in the background, you can always complain about that. But I'm talking foreground, the fights, the editing and everything, all of it made sense. There weren't really jarring cuts that suddenly one person's fighting this person here and then now they're somewhere in a different place and the things behind them don't make sense anymore none of that really happened it all just seemed seamless and made sense and none of it was jarring and weird and took you out of it so really really well done on the on the battles uh the other thing this movie does right is fan service this movie gives you lots and lots of fun little moments if you are a fan of world of warcraft so uh if you're a fan you are going to have maybe five or six little insider moments that you will notice for sure and tons and tons more that you will notice if you're really paying attention i've seen the movie twice now and the second time i saw it i noticed more things in the background that i didn't see the first time so i cannot wait until i own this movie and i can watch it over and over again and i can just look for all the fun little easter eggs because i'm sure there's plenty more that i didn't that i didn't get uh, all right and then before we we go on and we actually give the movie a rating let me talk let me talk about a couple things i think the movie did do um not so well. Not, I'm not going to say wrong, but not perfectly. Uh, one of the things is pacing. The movie doesn't really let you take a moment. Um, it drops you directly into the world at a really important moment in time. And it just says, all right, let's go. And it doesn't stop and let you go, what's going on here? Like, if you're someone who doesn't understand what's already happening... I can see how this will be a problem. I can see how this will be. You're going to feel confused and you're not going to feel like the movie ever gives you a chance to really catch up with what's happening because it's basically you get in there and then it's just breakneck speed all the way through to the end. Uh, and it's two hours long. So it's actually quite impressive to think about a movie that, that's able to do that. There are a lot of quick cuts and there are some things where it would have been nice to know like just how much time is passing and things like that but when you when you compare it to say a movie like batman v superman where there was just jarring scene changes out of nowhere the scene just this scene ended this one begins wow who are we where are we going now at least world of warcraft does the thing that you're supposed to do in a movie where it shows you some sort of shot 
some wide shot of the new location you are now traveling to or some sort of transition to give you an idea of now where we are. Uh, it's not just suddenly like, whoa, like what just happened? It doesn't do that. So while I'll say the pacing could have been improved, I have a, a feeling that a lot of the problems were just not enough time. Trying to get the movie down to two hours was probably a big struggle. And if anything, the movie would have benefited from maybe an extra 10, 15 minutes. Um, exposition, like I said, you get dropped in at a really important time in the history and the lore of, of Warcraft, and it's not really explained what's going on. They give you a little bit of voiceover, but there could have been, you know, there could have been a two, three, four minute long prologue of someone explaining what's going on here and explaining some of the characters and who they are. I would have loved to have seen a little more backstory on some of the characters. Um, so if anything, it was, that would be another thing I could say the movie didn't quite get right is there is a lot of, you know, the movie's kind of made for Warcraft fans, to be honest. So there were a lot of moments where they could have just slowed down and said, here's what's happening. Here's who this person is. Here's who that person is. Uh, that's whatever, you know, I, again, that's definitely something that's going to make some people struggle with the movie who don't know the lore. And I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. I'm not sorry because it didn't matter to me at all. I powered right on through. I knew what was happening. All right. Uh, actor choices. Um, now, I think all of the orc characters and the actors playing them were spot on. I don't think any of those characters did anything that seemed odd to me or weird. But there were a few times where the human characters made some choices that didn't make a lot of sense to me from a character's perspective. Now, now what I mean by that is dropped into a situation, they suddenly acted in a way that I hadn't seen them act at that moment. And maybe, you know, but by the end, I understood who they all were, so it was fine, but it, it took me a little while along the way to get on board. And the second viewing, knowing the characters already from seeing it once, um it was less obvious to me that this was happening, but I remember the first time I saw it, there was a couple times where I said, why would you, why would you act this way right now in this particular situation? Um, so if anything, that could have been better. And that's something where, you know, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into that. The actor themselves making that choice, the director maybe telling them to make a choice like that. Again, to me, these are small kind of nitpicky things. Um, I'm not going to look at this movie and these actors and say that I didn't enjoy their performances, but I definitely think there could have been, the performances could have been better. All right. There was room for improvement on some of these performances. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not going to tell them exactly what they should have done or anything like that. Cause I'm not an expert on that, but just someone watching the movie, I thought, huh, that's weird that you're suddenly acting this way. Okay. Uh, so if anything, there's, there's maybe some of that. Uh, let me go before we do our spoiler section where I just talk about actual people and their characters and what they do and what happens to them. Uh, let's talk about my overall review of the movie. I'm going to go ahead and say that as a movie, like if I'm just looking at it as here, I've seen movies. I like movies. How was this movie compared to most movies? If I were to give movies a scale of one being bad movie and 10 being best movie, so I guess one being worst movie and 10 being best movie, just movie wise. Where was this? Uh, seven out of 10. I say seven out of 10. Didn't do a lot of things perfectly, but did a lot of things right. And better than an average movie by far. I mean, an average movie is pretty bad, honestly. And this was way better than an average movie for, for anybody. I would say for anybody. Um, there's a lot of really crap fantasy movies out there that have, First of all, bad source material, and second of all, are just done poorly. And this is not one of those movies. I saw some movie reviews that compared it to Battlefield Earth, which is the most inane thing I could think of. How in the world, as a respectable movie critic, you could put Battlefield Earth and this movie in the same sentence is beyond me. That person, I will never, I will never ever look at any review made by that person again and take it seriously. Just that statement is so insane and ridiculous. Yeah, you could say this movie isn't a good movie. I totally say it all you want. I'm not going to say, oh yeah, no, it's definitely a good movie. 
movies are subjective whether you like them or not there is no just this is good always this is always bad some people like some things some people don't like some things i can see why some people wouldn't like this movie but holy crap to say that it's on the level of a battlefield earth is just stupid and dumb and you should feel dumb for saying it uh so seven out of ten as a movie as a piece of warcraft content this is a 10 out of 10 this is like we all love the cinematics we all love the cutscenes. We love the game. We love all of these things about Warcraft. We read books about it. We read comic books. We watch p other people make YouTube videos about the game itself. We ingest so much Warcraft content. This as a piece of Warcraft content, 10 out of 10. Amazing. Just, I had a blast. And if you're a person who likes Warcraft at all, then please just go see the damn movie and enjoy the hell out of it. And don't feel bad because the critics said it was bad and you should, you should think it's bad and you should feel bad if you like it. No, screw that. Screw them. You're right. They're wrong. This movie's amazing. All right. Spoiler section. This is the time where if you haven't seen the movie, you stop this video. You can pause it. Yeah, you, pa you pause it. Go see the movie. I'll wait for it. All right, well, now that you've seen the movie, let's go ahead and let's just talk about the spoiler section here. So small synopsis uh, of the story, just so we're all kind of on the same page here. Movie opens, we see uh, we see that, well, first of all, there's, there's an awesome scene with a human battling an orc, and you kind of get the sense, okay, one side, the other side, right? Um, and it's awesome. And then we see uh, Gul'dan kind of opening the portal, and using the lives of Draenei to power his opening of this portal and his fell magic to bring people through. We get to see uh, Duratan, we get to see Doom, uh, Orgrim Doomhammer, and Draka. We get to see some of these characters so we know that they're coming through. And we also get a sense that that they are, uh, specifically Duratan, uh, that they are not 100% on board with this plan as of yet, but they are orcs and they're going along with it. They're essentially summoning all of the orc clans to go through this portal because their world is dying and now they've got a new world that they can go to. Once they once they kill off the enemy, who is weak, according to Gul'dan, they should be able to just go ahead and swing on in there, no problem, take over this uh, this new world. So we see that happening. Uh, it's it's shown to us that uh, Duratan and Draka have a very cool relationship. Uh, Duratan's a, you know, kind of a loving family man who's about to have a baby. Draka comes through the portal. We see her go through, and she births baby Thrall, uh, Goel. But Goel comes out dead, stillborn. Uh, luckily, there's a deer nearby. Gul'dan sucks the life out of the deer, breathes life into Thrall. Thrall turns all green because of fell magic. So now we have baby Thrall. Uh, anyway, so that's that happens like pretty early on. It's a cool moment if you're really into World of Warcraft, just to see baby Thrall being born. Um, then we get to know some of the humans. Uh, they find out that these uh, orcs have come. We get to meet Lothar, uh, Anduin Lothar. For those people who got confused, there is a moment later in the movie where King Lane suddenly starts calling Lothar Anduin. And I had somebody somebody on a Reddit thread was like, so wait, was he Lothar or was he Anduin Rin? No, 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 he's Anduin Lothar. Anduin Rin is named after Anduin Lothar. Anyway, all right. Um, so we find out that they know that the orcs are here. Uh, this, this is a big deal. Cadgar is a mage who has left the Kirin Tor on his own volition, but he senses something's happening, so he comes to Stormwind, finds uh, some of the men who died at this garrison because he wants to inspect their bodies. He thinks there might be fell magic involved. He finds that there is, uh, and then he tells them that they got some of the Guardian. Now, the Guardian is Medivh. Medivh has been MIA for, I think they say, six years in the movie. Um, during this time, what we don't know and what you don't know as the moviegoer at that moment is that he's essentially been corrupted uh, by Sargeras and is doing all these bad things and trying to bring the orcs into, uh, into Azeroth. So that's kind of where we're at here. And then a lot of this kind of stuff starts to kind of build on itself. And we're really just now into the uh, orcs attacking trying to take and then the humans trying to defend and figure out how to fight back against these brand new monsters that they've never heard of 
we see the rise of Cadgar as you know essentially a young a young mage learning the ways in lore he's technically supposed to be Medivh's apprentice but they kind of forgo some of that this is another thing you need to know is that they retcon a lot of stuff they just change it and this is a brand new timeline a new set of events so don't get hung up on lore being exactly the same it's just not uh, we also meet Garona. Garona is half orc, half we presume human, uh, because she's supposed to be half Draenei, half orc. But uh, in this movie, it is never a hundred percent confirmed what other half she is. Although they continue to hint at the fact that she's actually half human, and I'm pretty sure that's in the in the novel that's confirmed that she's human now. Um, so she is uh, like kind of a slave of Gul'dan, essentially. She is part of a, a war party at one point. The humans end up freeing her, taking her with them as a prisoner. And uh, that's how she kind of becomes a part of their side, uh, explaining to them how, like, who the orcs are, um, what their plan is, and all that kind of stuff. And then eventually siding with the humans uh, to fight back against the orc invasion. So there's a lot going on here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally just empathize with people who have no idea this backstory um, because there is a lot going on here and there's a lot of characters and it's unclear really who's the main character because you could say that this is Lothar's story you could say that this is Duratan's story you could say this is Garona's story you could just say this is Azeroth's story really though like that it's I think a lot of people are going to need to just let go of the fact that we need one protagonist here because we don't really have one. We have several and they all have their own reasons for, for what they're doing. They all have their own motivations and it's just really, there's just too much of a mixed basket to, to kind of go at it like a traditional movie where we need to know who our protagonist is and who everyone else is. You could say that Lothar is, he is first build. Um, so, you know, take that for what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about just some of the people who were involved and what I thought of them in particular. Duncan Jones, first of all, huge commendations go out to Duncan Jones. I thought he did a fantastic job bringing the world to life. And as far as direction goes, he did amazingly well. He, he was fantastic. Um, you can really tell that he cares about this content in a real way. And he cares about this world and the lore behind it and all of that. So I'm really happy that they brought him on. Uh, you, I, I could just feel the passion of the directing coming through and some of the scenes that needed to be there to show how big and how wonderful this world is were there. So things like flying a griffin up over mountains, things like showing up to, to Dalaran and seeing the Cloud City, um, those were important. And also you saw there was some really cool stuff where you see the orcs kind of invading and then you actually kind of see like RTS view a little bit of them. Uh, here's here's a town they've burned and and pillaged and taken all the prisoners. Here's a town that just recently happened to. Here's a town they're actually doing it to right now, and it kind of goes over all that. We see some of the uh, really cool stuff in the background. You see Stormwind from lots of different angles, and just amazingly well done stuff as far as directing is concerned. Um, awesome shots. Everything seemed to make sense. Everything seemed seamless as far as uh, as actual direction was concerned. Cast and crew, let's talk about some of those. Travis Fimmel as Anduin Lothar. Um, there, was a, there was some oddness to it where he was a little bit, he was a little bit more comedic than I would have expected. Uh, but I think he's kind of a smart ass. I would think of him as that, a, a kind of a cocky prick because he's so damn good. Um, so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the choices that they made. He, he's, just, he's just an amazing warrior who also is a little bit detached because of some things that have happened. You know, his, his wife died in childbirth for the son. Now, the son, his, the son's story, I'm not sure if that's at all. I'd have to do a little more research, but I'm not sure if that story actually exists in World of Warcraft at all. But, um, or sorry, in Warcraft. But either way, I, I was okay with the storyline because it did set him up as, as why he was a little detached, why he was just kind of out there to do his thing. Uh, and there was a really, and I did really like the scene with his son where his son actually does end up getting killed by black hand right in front of him. Uh, that I thought was pretty powerful. They could have probably done it a little bit snappier. I think they took a little too long take, you know, doing it. There was a really cool moment where his son who is just baby faced and just looks inexperienced, 
uh, is on the other side of this lightning wall created by Medivh. And he turns to his dad, and his dad's trying to, you know, he's saying, I got to get him out of here. He's trying to get Medivh to stop the lightning wall. And his son turns to him, realizes, hey, it's just me and like three guys against an army of orcs. And he says, for Azeroth, and charges into battle. And that moment was awesome. I really enjoyed that moment. Even if you didn't like the son's character, that moment was awesome. Uh, and he dies a hero's death there. Uh, Paula Patton as Garona. I would have liked a little CGI on her because it was kind of jarring that she was just human looking with some green skin. But, you know, she is a strong, you know, larger woman compared to the, at least compared to some of the other uh, women in the in the film. Um, so it was okay. But I could have I could have had a little more CGI on her. Now she's one of the people I was talking about that her choice of when she was a slave to then suddenly being in the presence of King Lane and then she suddenly started acting really cocky was kind of weird to me. And I understand she's orc. Maybe that's just she's our feisty personality, right? But uh it just it took me a little bit out of it, you know, cuz she's been a slave to Gul'dan forever, right? And now and like they showed that she was caring and kind of quiet and reserved. And then all of a sudden she's just like Punkin the king. I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. Ben Foster is Medivh. Uh, it took me a second to to get into a shirtless Medivh making golems at the top of Karazhan. But once I was over that initial shock of him, uh, I really enjoyed his character. I think he he showed the kind of battle between... You know, he, he didn't necessarily know all the things he was doing because, you know, he brought the orcs in while he was corrupted, right? So he it wasn't necessarily that he knew that he was doing all this stuff. I think he had an idea, but but then at a certain point, he just kind of flips into, yes, I am evil Medivh. So Medivh is presented as a good guy at the beginning, and then you realize pretty quickly that something weird's going on here. But I thought his portrayal of Medivh was good. Um, we're not going to see Medivh except for maybe ghost form or something like that at some some point later on. But, uh, you know, he I, I think he brought – I think he did a good job. I think he was serviceable as Medivh. Uh, I'm not going to say that I thought he did fantastically well, but I think he was a serviceable Medivh. Uh, King Lane Wren, Dominic Cooper. He was fine. He was uh, the stubborn king, which is what he was. I mean, he was the guy who didn't want him to leave Stormwind, you know, and just fight the orcs at Stormwind. Uh, but in the end, he has a, a very heroic culmination to his story and proves that he is a, a worthy king. And, you know, I, I, I liked I liked how his story kind of, and you know, just kind of how it crescendoed to this really climactic moment, um, which is going to set up quite a few things in the future. So, uh, it, you know, Garona stabs King Lane in the neck with the dagger that was given to her by the king's wife, which is uh, Lady Taria, which is kind of a crazy moment to think about. And, um, but it's to essentially set themselves up on a path where they could possibly find peace someday between the orcs and the humans. And this is King Lane's idea. Uh, having Garona die and the king die. Like, the king knows he's going to die. There's no, there's nothing, nothing he can do about that. There ain't no getting out of that. Uh, but maybe he can have Garona, who he knows to be good at that moment, do this thing just to save her. And somehow, from the inside out, she can then do something to help. Uh, and it, she kills King Lane in, in Warcraft lore anyway. So this is just a different way of doing it. Uh, I thought Duratan and Orgrim were amazing. I'm going to just talk about both of them together. But the acting, the scenes between them, the warrior bromance was just a joy to watch. And then, of course, the crumbling of that, uh, but the respect between the two uh, at the end. And, you know, I thought Duratan's, Duratan's final scene was incredibly emotional, uh, basically giving himself... Again, similar to King Lane, you saw Duratan do a very similar thing, giving himself in the hopes that his death will alter the course of events in a way that will stop the uh, the destruction of the world and the destruction of their own people. So I thought that was amazingly well done. Cadgar, though, to me, was, I think, one of my favorite things about the movie. I really loved Cadgar. Uh, ben Schnetzer is Cadgar, and he's young. He's kind of... He's excited, he's excited, excitable, brash, ready to go, very smart, very talented as a mage, uh, figures it all out, 
and is just dangerous to Medivh. Medivh knows it. Medivh treats him bad. Lothar treats him bad, but he's always there to do the thing that needs to be done and uh, has some of the funnier moments in the movie and also some of the more powerful moments. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Ben Schnetzer, and you can tell that he's going to be around for a while, so that's really cool. Blackhand was uh, Clancy Brown was incredibly scary and... You never wanted anything good to happen to him, and luckily bad things do end up happening to him. Uh, but let's talk about, real quick, let's talk about Daniel Wu. This will be the last actual person I talk about. Uh, his Goldan was was dope. Uh, not only did Goldan look like Goldan, but Goldan was uh, just evil, all as evil as all hell, just like the embodiment of everything evil, just power-hungry. All he wants is he just wants to continue to just take lands, destroy them using his fell magic. He doesn't care about the price. He just kills more and more people until he gets what he wants. That's all he cares about. He doesn't give a crap about orc tradition. He doesn't give a crap about honor. It's him and him alone, and every everything and everybody is a tool uh, at his disposal, and it comes across in the performance really well. There's an amazing moment where Orgrim is talking to him about what they're going to do next, uh, and about giving Orgrim some fell magic in front of the other orcs to show how powerful the fell magic is and all that kind of stuff. And they're having this moment. It's also where Orgrim essentially has betrayed Duratan. Uh, and Gul'dan is at the top of this hill with a human prisoner just sitting there just kind of... It's like he's having a cocktail. He's just drawing life out of this guy. He's just... Just drawing life out of this poor asshole. And <laughs> it's just him just at his most pure diabolical self it's awesome i loved it and uh he was amazing so i uh, guldan being the, the big baddie throughout the entire series uh until hopefully lich king shows up will be amazing so loved it loved all of those guys' performance uh the music i shared in my friend alachia's sentiments that i do wish they had actually just gotten world of warcraft people in on the music um would have would loved to see some of that but instead they got their own people I, I guess the the music to me was fine. It served the plot just fine. Never felt out of place, but I would have liked to have seen some of those familiar melodies come back and just some of those things happen. That would have been cool, but it didn't happen. Um, some of the things that I do wish did happen. Uh, I I kind of wish that we had a prequel to this movie. If this was the second movie, I would have been totally okay with that. Where the first movie. Was Now, I haven't read the book, but I'm guessing essentially would have been The Rise of the Horde book, uh, which kind of tells the tale of um, uh, Ner'zhul and Gul'dan and Kul'jaeden and how Gul'dan becomes kind of the uh, the, the warlock that he is. Um, I think that would have been really, really cool. You see, you would have been introduced to Duratan, you would have been introduced to Gul'dan, uh, Gromish, Kil'jaeden, Velen as well. You could have been introduced to all of these characters and, you know, the destruction of Draenor, um, you know, kind of turning it into the Outlands. And that would have been awesome. So then, then there, I think there would have been more, there would have been more kind of substance to this movie if we already had that movie. Now, I understand why you can't really do that because then people are going to come in and go, well, where are all the damn humans, dude? <laughs> what is this? Where's the Alliance? Uh, but I, I think that's really the story that sets up the whole damn thing in the first place, right? So that could have been cool. I would really would have enjoyed that. If you told the backstory of the humans, it would have been like, oh man, there was like peace for a long time, dude. Um, but the Horde story before they actually get to Azeroth is really amazing. So I think that would have been really cool. I would have liked to have seen backstory on Lothar, Lane, and Mediv because they all grew up together, but that does not come across in the movie. At one point, you find out that Lane is married to Lothar's sister, uh, but you don't, and like they say things like old friend and stuff like that, but there's not, like those three growing up together is I think a big plot point that wasn't ever mentioned really. You know, the fact that they grew up together and now here they are as the basically the three protectors of the kingdom is kind of a big deal and something that I think should have been mentioned or at least shown in some way. So I wish that was there. Uh, I would have liked more explanation on Garona before she just kind of shows up and she speaks Draenei and then she speaks human and or common. Um, a little bit more about who she is and what her deal is because she was thrust as a main character like really quickly. 
Uh, again, this is the exposition that might have been missing. Now, they do hint at Medivh being her father. I don't know if this has been confirmed or anything. That's really weird because I don't know if you guys know this, but she has, uh, in Warcraft lore, she gets it on with Medivh, and they have a son, Medan, who is the last guardian who is, you know, part, uh, you know, she's has three races mixed together and is incredibly powerful, can use all the magic in the world, and is basically just too powerful, uh, who has just kind of been written out of World of Warcraft completely at this point. Because he's so damn powerful, it doesn't really mean anything. His power is just too great. Uh, but he is essentially, like, the only guardian left or the final guardian or whatever. So, you know, there's some retconning happening here, which I think is fine if they decided that Medan was a mistake then it's probably better to just get rid of the possibility of that mistake ever happening again. So if Medivh is Garona's father, that is interesting. Um, it's just a little like, whoa, huge plot twist, boys. All right. Uh, okay, some more hints at how much time is passing. I, did, I, I think I mentioned this earlier. I wish this was in the movie. I wish they would talk about, oh, by the way, this whole thing takes place over like 20 years because it, I, it wouldn't be 20 years, but it'd be like, I don't know, three or four years. But it seems like it was all happening within like the span of a week and a half or something like that. So to me, that was a little odd. I could have used, uh, I could have used a little more, just something just to say, hey, some time has passed. Let us kind of know that that's how it's going because it did seem like, wow, that's a lot of crap to have suddenly happened within, you know, like a week or so. Uh, that being said, these are all like nitpicky things, and I'm fine with them not existing. I'm fine with them being the way they are. I'm, I, I left this movie just so damn excited and so happy and ready to go see it again. I've, seen, I've now seen it twice. I plan on seeing it at least two more times in the theaters. I will definitely be buying the extended collector's edition, whatever the hell it is that they offer. Uh, I loved this movie so much. If you hate this movie and you complain about this movie, to me that's like, it's like riding a jet ski and complaining about the weather, right? It's like you're missing the point. You're riding a damn jet ski. It's like, it's like eating ice cream and like bitching about how you didn't get enough sprinkles, right? It's like, dude, you're eating ice cream. Settle down. This it's like, it's like finally sleeping with like the person that you've been pining over, you know, for years and years. And then you just like, this bed's too squeaky. Like it's to me, it's just crazy. Why are you sitting here crapping on the thing that we finally got that we wanted for so long? And that actually turned out really good it's like looking for the negative in this movie is just missing the point of this movie completely to me to me this is i go in, i sit down and i get to be inside the world of azeroth for two hours and that's what i always wanted to be doing man so now we get it so not only we got the warcraft movie that took it took the world the characters seriously we got some of the best cgi best visuals we're set up for a trilogy like, I love this movie. This movie was made for me. I am the person that this movie was made for. I'm really happy that Duncan Jones, Legendary Pictures, all the people involved, uh, all the Blizzard people, you know, Chris Metzen and all those you know, the creative people there who were involved. Uh, I'm so happy that you guys gave me this film. I think the critics are full of crap. I think it's just a cool thing to crap on the Warcraft movie and basically video game movies in general and video game culture in general. It just this is another chance for them to crap on that. And you know what? Screw those guys. This, I want everyone out there who wants to see this movie, who's excited about this movie, to throw all of that stuff out there. Just throw it out. Throw it out. Go see this movie. Have fun. And just enjoy the fact that you're a WoW nerd and you just got your movie. And this is for you and you're going to love it. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a little long-winded. I don't know how I'm going to edit this thing down to make it somehow manageable. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to listen to me talk. Look, I'm a podcaster. I do long-form entertainment, okay? So I'm sorry about that. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the movie. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the movie. And uh, please check out all the other crap I do. All the things will be linked below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. I'm going to hopefully be doing more things like this as, as stuff that's relevant to uh to my field happens but uh thank you guys for watching again i love you and i'll see you guys later